50, KTRS. You know, I've come to the conclusion that fewer and fewer politicians want to come on the show. I, maybe it's me. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's them. I don't know. But uh, the few that do want to come on, we certainly want to create a nice space for them to be able to answer our questions. Today, Austin Peterson is back by popular demand. Good morning, Austin. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are a uh, GOP Republican Senate candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, you are uh, running in the primary against uh, Josh Hawley, ultimately to take on Claire McCaskill. So that's where you are. You are the mm, upstart candidate. Yeah, you are the rogue candidate. What, are, what, what do you call yourself? The, the, the non-traditional candidates? The anti-establishment candidate. The anti-establishment right. candidate. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, you've been here uh, a couple times. You called up, I should say, or texted us and said you were coming through. Do you want to come on the show? So we... Um, all you have to do is ask. It yeah. isn't like, you know, I mean, it, right? it's very simple. All you yeah. do is ask. And yeah. every time you ask, I'll put you on the show. It's well, I appreciate as as you having me. Um, so uh, when, when last we left you, you got into a little controversy with uh, Facebook mm -hmm. and machine guns. Yeah. Where you were suspended from Facebook for a couple of days? Well, I was doing what every good conservative does and just giving away free AR-15s for my campaign. And yes. Facebook had banned us twice. We had done a little homework. We found out that their chief operating officer had been contributing the maximum to Claire. So we wrote a letter to Mark Zuckerberg and said, hey, we know you're concerned about Russian election interference. So will Facebook stop interfering with the election in Missouri? Mm -hmm. They backed off. And, you know, people were calling for for a repeal of the Second Amendment, which is just nuts. So I said, hey, they want to go hard left. Let's not play defense, right? The Attorney General says, oh, we need to move quickly to ban firearms accessories with executive orders. And right. I'm like, okay, well, I don't see that in the Constitution. Uh, but I said, you know what? They want to repeal the Second Amendment. I want to repeal the National Firearms Act, right? And then, hey, let's see them compromise. Let's talk about concealed carry reciprocity nationwide. Let's talk about the Hearing Protection Act. There's a lot of firearms manufacturers here in Missouri that would like to sell more suppressors. Right. Why do people have to wait 18 months and get a tax stamp to be able to uh, protect their hearing. So that's what I'm standing for. I think we need to stop playing defense, stop talking about how we're going to lose a little bit of our rights. Let's start talking about how we're going to expand our rights on the Second Amendment. So you were uh, you were out there you mean you were out there pouring a little gasoline on the fire. You were, you were looking to make a stink over this. Uh, jet fuel, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was, yeah, of course, because I again, I'm so what the Democrats want, they want to take all of our guns and it seems like the Republicans just want to take a little bit of our guns. But right? hold on a second. I mean, really Democrats really don't want to take your guns. They mm -hmm. might want to. They might. They might want a background check or two. Mm -hmm. But do they really want to take your guns? Yes, they do want to repeal the Second Amendment. They've said so clearly. Well, plainly. no, no. Hold on a second. Some yes. on the far left might right. have said that. Okay. But there's not a lot of people on the far. There's not a lot of people who who would say, "Hey, you." M m the uh, the bigger argument is, "Hey, you want to hunt? You want to fish? You want to practice? You want to write?" Knock yourself out. How about a couple of checks to sort of slow down or possibly help uh, guns from getting into the wrong hands? Uh, I just think that the problem is is that it's not the guns that are the issue. I think that we have a mental health problem, and I'm not sure how the government can solve that. And if you look at all of these mass shooters, which, by the way, they're extremely rare, crimes, homicides involving guns Absolutely. has been on the decline since yes. the 1990s, right? There was a, a uh, there was a mass murder in Canada involving a truck, right? People who want to commit mass murders are going to find ways to do it, whether or not the tool is a gun or what have you. Uh, but again, it's frank, frankly, they're, the people who want to repeal the Second Amendment on the left are the anchor who are trying to drag us in that direction. And I'm trying to turn the ship around. I want to stop talking about repealing. I want to stop talking about, you know, controlling this, banning this right here and there, because that's how they get you. It's a game of inches. So I want to start turning it around, t talking about expanding our rights, not contracting them. But there are, Austin Peterson, you must admit, two different societies. Mm -hmm. You've got rural Missouri, where... You grew up with guns. It's just part of your culture, right? Yeah. Then you have an inner city family who's been devastated by guns. They mm -hmm. hear gunfire every night. Maybe a relative, maybe a friend, maybe a brother have died. Maybe the girl walking to school was shot and killed by a, a stray bullet. And so they don't want to take your guns. They just want to be able to go to school without their kid being shot. Listen, I totally understand that, and I sympathize with the victims of these tragedies. But I, I have to stay. I have to say, there is no tragedy, no matter how great, that justifies taking away the rights of innocent people. And apply that to another issue, right? So the left might say, "Oh, well, that doesn't, that shouldn't apply to guns." Well, what about the Patriot Act after 9/11? Right now, we have unconstitutional, warrantless surveillance of American citizens. Right, just because a tragedy occurred on 9/11, we shouldn't be taking away people's Fourth Amendment rights, and that should apply to the Second Amendment as well. Um, 
Well, they have FISA courts for that stuff, but that's a whole other issue. Right. It's a whole other issue, but there is some backdoor warrantless surveillance that's going on, right? And if, frankly, if you want to be able to listen to an American's phone call or if you want to get our emails, you should have to get a warrant. You should have to go through that process, and that's what I stand for. So, again, it's not a gun issue, right? Uh, if you look at all of these mass shooters, one thing that they all have in common is that they don't have good fathers, right? Maybe we need to have more good fathers, but frankly, I'm not sure what piece of legislation as a senator I could introduce to make that happen. All right. Let's uh, move on. Let's talk about the state of uh, Missouri, because um, uh, even though you're running for the United States Senate and mm -hmm. there's a separation, right. uh, your a candidate or your opponent, Josh Hawley, is right smack dab in the middle of this Eric Reitens controversy. Yeah, yeah. As you watch this, what are you saying? Well, I've been all over the state, and I've talked to a lot of conservative Republicans, and they are not happy because they agree with me with the concept of no beheadings without due process. Essentially, that the governor has not had his day in court yet, right? And all of the things that have come out in this report are allegations, right? And there's a lot of, I've read the entire report. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of maybes in there. There's a lot of wiggle room in there. And frankly, she still has to be cross-examined by the defense. So I'm, I'm concerned that the attorney general has now put himself in a position where he's overstretched his bounds. And so now it's it, there's an old saying if you want to kill the king you better sh get him in the first shot Right, and so now he has to he's committed to the d destruction. So what of do you Brighton's. what are you most upset about with his actions? Well, in February, he said specifically that he could not comment on an ongoing criminal investigation. I think that he could have left it just at that. But mm -hmm. instead, I think what's happening is that he's reading the polls and he's getting his opinion from the polls. And he's making a calculated decision to throw the governor under the bus based on what he thinks is popular. Well, what's right is not always what's popular and what's popular is not always what's right. If he had just waited until the governor had been able to, to defend himself, then perhaps we could have seen whether the governor was guilty or not. But again, no beheadings without due process. The governor deserves his day in court. Court. The governor was begged to come and testify in front of the this this House committee. Yeah, well, the House committee is one thing, and the criminal court's another. I think he probably wants to make sure that he's got all the evidence, right? It's been they've been rushing this through, right? He's going to have to he's going to have to go up there and well, he wants it sooner himself. rather than later. Yeah, but uh, again. I can't know what the, what's on the governor's mind or what their defense is going to be, but we haven't heard their proper defense yet, and I'd like to hear it before I make a decision. But again, it wasn't like the governor wasn't given the opportunity to speak in a friendlier setting, right? It was his own parties investigating... Oh, right. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to just the because George in your Soros, own party. just just, yeah. uh, you know, as opposed to the George Soros led uh, Kim Gardner. Yeah. Well, just because they're in your own party doesn't necessarily mean that they're friendly. Right. Don't you think, though, reading that report mm -hmm. that it was just disturbing? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Right. And if he did commit those crimes, which they are, they would be crimes of assault. Right. And, mm -hmm. and a, a f forced interactions. Then, of course, he should step down. But that's the thing is that we don't know for sure because we don't have evidence to prove that he did these things. Right. Well, it's now I'm, I'm going to take Josh Hawley's side just for argument's sake here. Sure. I think Josh Hawley would say, look, I wasn't making a, a legal argument. Mm -hmm. I was saying I read this. It was disturbing. Mm -hmm. He was cheating on his wife, and there was a bit of violence in this, um, inappropriate um, sort of violence or stepping over the line. Yeah. I don't want a governor who does this, and he should resign. Well, what was so terrible uh, about Josh Hawley saying that? Because it was yeah. a very a disturbing report. Yeah, and we have a, a, a slew of women coming out accusing the president of the exact same thing. So why doesn't the attorney general have the guts to say the same thing to our president? He doesn't, right? Because there, are, there have been multiple allegations against the president of similar things, right? But he hasn't called out the president for those things, right? We want to wait until we get the evidence on both sides. He's a constitutional lawyer. And again, I think that the governor deserves due process and his day in court before we make a decision. And again, this is the Democrats' playbook now, McGraw. This is what they're going going to do now to come after public officials. They're going to find someone to come out and make an accusation. Again, if he did those things, that's one thing. If he did not, then I think that it, it emboldens the Democrats to use this strategy going forward. Do you think Josh Hawley has um, uh, has, not, has no longer has the, the ability to investigate uh, the governor in any of the other capacities he is going to be, be investigating? To be honest, I don't, actually. I don't think that he does. And I, I don't know about the the merits of a restraining order, but I do know that now that he's called for the go for the governor to step down, I think that that will necessarily tinge any further investigations that he has going forward. And I'm not quite sure why he decided to give the um, 
the uh, data breach or what was the it was like a computer tampering in order to to get the the list of the organization right, he built. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why he handed that over to the St. Louis prosecutor. Actually, I spoke to someone the other day that said he could have handed that over to the Cole County prosecutor, right? So I mean, politically, it doesn't necessarily make much sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I honestly don't think that he can be impartial now that he has come out and made a political statement about the the fact that the governor should step down because again, like I said, he's now he now for his own political career he has to destroy the governor because if he doesn't if the governor gets exonerated and cleared of all charges then josh hawley gets egg on his face and he looks like a bad lawyer well you don't want to look like a bad lawyer because we've already got a bad lawyer in the u.s senate seat we don't want to replace one bad lawyer with another bad lawyer austin peterson our guest he wants to be your united states senator let me ask you about fundraising because uh it came out not too long ago Mm -hmm. claire's got ridiculous amounts of money yeah oh yeah i I want to say like 13 14 million dollars 13 million yeah um this is being billed mm-hmm. as one of the target seats for the for the country. Sure. Right? And this is gonna this is high profile. Josh Hawley barely has two million dollars <laughs> in the bank. Yeah. Explain to me how the front runner only has two million dollars in the bank. I think it's lazy, to be quite honest. And uh, so there was a Republican strategist the other day who's a Holly supporter who asked not to be named who said that he's this young guy and he's allergic to hard work, right? The other day we saw him. Where did he say this? He said this in the New York Times, okay. right? He was speak, He was kind of leaking to the New York Times that this guy's allergic to hard work. And I know this because I have been to, what, 33, 34 Lincoln Days events around the state. I've only seen him at one of these events. He always cites personal conflicts. And then we see photographs the other day of him being in the gym in Columbia when he's supposed to be at work in Jefferson City. So I think this is a guy who's been handed everything his entire life. I think that he thinks he's going to get handed this primary. He's going to get handed this Senate seat. And frankly, I don't think that that's the kind of values that we want to send to Washington, D.C. Claire's working her butt off, right? She may have... $13 million in the bank, but she is all over the state doing town halls, doing everything that she can to win. I'm out there everywhere trying to counter her, trying to get her out of this office, and the Attorney General doesn't even RSVP to tell a lot of these Lincoln Day events that he's that he's not going to be there, right? So I think that he that, that's the problem, and you're not going to outraise Claire McCaskill, but here's the deal. If money could buy elections, Hillary would be the president right now. So we're not going to be able to out-fundraise her. We're going to have to outwork her. So he's a lazy guy sitting on his butt, and he's not doing the hard the job that we elected him to do. He's getting a taxpayer check for that, and he's not campaigning for the Senate seat he claims to want. I'm the hardest-working man in the Republican Senate primary. I'm the guy who can fire Claire. If Eric Greitens is found guilty of this invasion of privacy charge, or if he's found innocent— mm-hmm. Uh, let's ask it th- this way. If he's found innocent or they, they drop the charges or whatever, uh, do you think he, by the strength of that report, he should step down? I wouldn't if it was me, because if I was not guilty, if I had not committed a crime, I don't think that an extramarital affair is a, is a crime. I think it's a mistake, right? But I, again, I but, mean, but, but do you believe the woman in saying that, that some violence occurred? I mean, he said she was, you know, pushed around and slapped, and there was a I there was a line that was crossed somewhere in there, according to her. Yeah, I don't know because the thing is, is that again, allegations are one thing, right? And again, the governor said, uh, and I'm not I'm not sure this is corroborated yet, but that she may have remembered this through a dream. And this is not about me defending the governor or attacking her at all. This is about me defending due process, and this is about my fear that if we set a precedent for throwing our fellow Republicans under the bus for these kinds of sexual crime, you know, mm-hmm. quote allegations that this is what the Democratic playbook will be. Remember, did they? the, the Democrats didn't throw Bill Clinton under the bus when we had these kinds that of allegations, true. That right? Is true. So it's not as if they... Well, y- Republicans you know. did. <laughs> Republicans <laughs> did. Right, right. So, so I did, what, yeah. the I question wanna, is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, I just now you people set, have switched sides. I don't want to set a bad precedent. Let me ask you this about the email scandal and the using the Mission Continues mm-hmm. list. Yeah. If he is found guilty of that which he, they have already paid the fine for. Right. But if he, but, you know, criminally, uh, if this, right, if he's found guilty of that, should he step down? No. <laughs> he built that organization. I mean, the Federal Election yeah, Commission. But, law, but the, it wasn't his, though. I know, but the, here's the thing. The FEC fines and rules and regulation are terrible. They're horrible. And and the thing is, if you for something like this, you have a list from an institution that you started, right? It's it's a maze, a myriad of, of uh, hoops that you have to jump through in order to make sure that you comply with these things. It, I wouldn't necessarily attribute to malice what could be just, you know, mishandling, for example, right? But I don't think that that's the kind of thing that you need to topple a governor. I mean, the, here's the problem. I, I find that the you being a rule of law guy, I find that kind of interesting. Well, yeah. 
Yeah, well, you know, you don't. Not every not every crime deserves, uh, you know, the the death penalty. If 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 he knowingly knew it was wrong, and did it anyway, mm-hmm. should he step down? Can I say I don't know? Sure, yeah. you can say is it. Okay, so, See, I, I, I don't want to put yeah. answers in, in <laughs> yeah. your mouth. I, I, let me just say that I don't know. Okay, fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, all right, now, um, all right. We talked about the fundraising. Talked about Holly. Talked mm-hmm. about Greitens. Let's leave you with this. What's this story? Because this is really interesting. Not getting a lot of attention yeah. here in um, a, a Missouri. And one of your people passed me a note uh, about this that you're you're following this story in the UK about yeah. this baby who the UK has told uh, or the family you're not allowed to leave the country for medical treatments. This mm. is an interesting story. Yeah, it just disturbs me. I, so that's why I said that you can keep that socialized medicine right the hell away from the good old U.S. of A. Right, this is the problem, is that when you have socialized medicine, the government decides who lives or dies. At the end of the day, you know, they were the Democrats were saying, oh, fear-mongering about death panels. This is exactly what we were talking about. Because when you when it's free, right, the government controls who gets the medicine and who doesn't. And the, the government of Italy actually extended citizenship status to this child, flew in a chopper in order to, to life flight that child to the to Italy so that that child could receive treatment. The government surrounded that helicopter and stopped them from being able to offer aid and treatment to that child. So that's the kind of danger that we would be em, em, embarking on if we brought that to the United States. Listen, the free market is dangerous and it's messy and it's not perfect, but at least we have the freedom to seek treatment somewhat here in the United States. I'd like to expand that. I think that socialized medicine is a disaster and we need to go right the other way so obamacare in your opinion socialized medicine yes medicare medicaid it's more not like, socialized medicine it's welfare because a lot of the times what you do is you can go and you can seek a private doctor essentially what it is is, is a handout i don't agree with those kinds of programs but frankly you know the 1.3 trillion dollar omnibus that we just built that we just passed a few weeks ago which by the way million dollars a minute we're spending 21 trillion dollars in debt a, tr- a it's trillion your party. dollar debt your party hey well listen i was the one standing up against it right just because i'm a, I'm a republican doesn't mean that i have to agree with everything that they do but we're spending 25 million dollars for underprivileged egyptian children i'd rather spend that money here first i believe in america first right so we should be taking care of our own people before we're sending that money overseas but how is obamacare socialized medicine because of the exchanges because of the exchanges. well but it, well it's a regulated mm-hmm. it's regulated you could argue overly regulated mm-hmm. but i gotta go on this exchange buy an insurance plan just like the person next to me who has an insurance plan through their their company. Yeah, well, the thing is, listen, they said if you like your health insurance plan, you can keep it. I started a small business in 2013, and I had good, affordable health insurance. My health insurance was canceled twice, twice, and that hurts small business owners here in the United States who want to have options. Then when I took a look at what my options would be, it made more sense to just pay the fine and not get involved with the health insurance scheme because the deductibles were so but, insanely But here's high. where it all falls down. Mm-hmm. So you'd rather pay the fine, or yeah. one would rather pay the fine, yeah. and, and not have health insurance. Yeah. And then you break your leg. Yeah. And then you go to the emergency room, and you must be treated. Yeah. Okay? Then who pays for that? Me. Yeah. Who well, actually, who yeah, actually didn't because, pay the fine. Because the government forces you to be, get, to uh, be able to get no, that no, no, treatment. No, I understand so that. The right. government so, is trying to fix right, a problem so, that the government created. So, so, so when Ronald Reagan signed that into forcing health uh, yeah. doctors and hospitals to cover yeah. people, yeah. you would like to see what? Would, are, are you saying you'd like to see hospitals turn people away and say, I'm sorry, you don't have insurance and you can't pay? Therefore, I mean, the whole no. idea no. of supply and demand doesn't work when it comes to medical. That's a lie. And let me tell you what. No, no, no. 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 If if, if, if I'm rushed to the hospital, if I'm I'm rushed to the hospital, if I'm rushed to the hospital, they don't say to me, huh, yeah. Do you want the 1995 yeah. plan or the 1295? Yeah. They fix me up. Yeah, and before we had health care in this system, everybody was dying in the streets before the 1930s. Before we had an income tax, there were no I'm not roads. I'm, 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 how I'm did we have health care? But how did people possibly survive antibiotics created with, without with this free market health care system? Listen, when I was a kid at 14 years old, eye surgery cost fifteen thousand dollars, and it would sometimes revert. What has happened, right? You couldn't insurance doesn't co- doesn't cover this elective procedure. Now what's happened? You can get eye surgery for a thousand dollars completed with a, with high quality. The quality has come up. The cost has come down. Why competition? Because be, because with insurance. No 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 no. no, 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 no. Yeah, you, yeah 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 explain, yeah yeah. Ex, no no no. When yeah. when I buy a hamburger. Yeah. And this person pay, charges me too much for a hamburger. Mm-hmm. I I can pick and choose. Mm-hmm. Right. But if I'm being rushed to the emergency room. Yeah. They don't say. 
do you want this surgery? Do you not want this surgery? Mm -hmm. Would you rather go to this hospital or that hospital? Here, before I give you this shot, it's $20. Mm -hmm. Do you want this shot? Or mm -hmm. this shot's $90. Yeah. Th they don't. So normal supply and demand, right, doesn't necessarily work when it comes to hospitals. We, we, that's just not true. And the thing is, is we don't know. Because throw me a the, bone the, here. The thing is, throw me a bone. Some, right? Come on. Mm, come on. Uh, no, come uh, on. You, no bones for you, McGraw. How come? Nope. How come? How come? When you and I go to the same rest, rest, mm -hmm. restaurant, we order the same meal, we mm -hmm. have the same price. Mm -hmm. We go to the same hospital, we, we get the same treatment, and we have two different prices. Well, th listen. There's a lot of healthcare providers nowadays that are offering their prices on their website, so you can now know if you do need some of these procedures exactly what it is that you're going to pay. And they don't accept insurance. They don't accept Medicare and Medicaid. You pay out of pocket. And so, you know, here's the deal. Like, I can't have a solution for every single thing. Politicians are not gods. I cannot pass a law that's going to pass. That's going to grant everybody free things. I'm not Bernie Sanders, right? There's no magical <laughs> health care fairy that's going to come out of land. It's going to give everybody everything they need. I'm not offering you utopia right. like some s democratic socialist. What I'm saying is, is that if we have a smaller government in this country, then we will need families, friends, neighbors, and churches in order to step up to solve society's problems. I think we'll have stronger communities. I think we'll have more charity. I think we'll have stronger families, and I think we'll have a healthier society. We'll leave it there, Austin Peterson. What's your website for people to find out more? AustinForSenate.com. AP for Liberty on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, AustinForSenate.com. Please donate and vote August 7th in the Republican primary. Where do we donate? AustinForSenate.com oh, slash my goodness. Give. There yeah. you go. Uh, Austin Peterson, thanks for coming in. Uh, you're always welcome here.